So, the sales data from Metro Premier Mastered is in, and I have mixed feelings on this. And before you ask, yes I do care, and no I haven't kissed a woman before. On the positive end, for a game series with a troubled sales history like Metroid, getting this far up the charts so quickly is huge. In under two months, it's already sold better than both of the other 2D Metroid remakes, it's also been Hunters in sales, and considering the fact that this data is only good for up to March 31st, it's probably past Echoes by now too. Considering this game was shadow dropped, that's very impressive. On top of that, I think it's safe to assume that Nintendo expected this game to flop. They shadow dropped it, they only priced it at $40, and they produced very few physical copies. So, I think it's safe to say that having sold a million this quickly, Nintendo's seen their mistake in not believing in Metroid. Sure, it being priced at $40 instead of $60 means Nintendo won't get as much profit from it as other million copy sellers, but the aforementioned physical copy shortage also suggests that the vast majority of these sales are digital sales. The thing about digital sales is that Nintendo doesn't have to spend any money on manufacturing or split money with the retailer when it comes to these digital sales, which allows for a lot of extra profit. This many sales so quickly will hopefully convince them to put more oomph into Metroid Prime 4's marketing, and hopefully increase the output of Metroid games in the future. Or maybe Prime 4 will sell a gazillion units, and we still won't get any more Metroid games for 6 years, because these days even Mario can go on hiatus. But now it's time for the negative end of this issue. Now, these numbers are very good, don't get me wrong. But a lot of people, myself included, were led to believe it would be more. Metroid Prime Remastered was in the top three on the eShop's bestseller list, usually number one in that top three, from its launch to well into March. And there were also a lot of other bestseller charts showing Prime as number one. And then that, combined with a lot of internet buzz in general, caused many people to think it would go on to outsell Dread. I didn't think it would. And honestly, I wouldn't want it to either, since uh, Shadow Drop Prime Remastered outselling the first new 2D Metroid game in 19 years would be a huge slap in the face for 2D Metroid, and even 2D games in general. However, while I didn't expect it to be Dread, I was still thinking it would be somewhere between 1.5 to 2 million units, with maybe over 2 million as a lifetime. Instead, it barely passed 1 million. Now, I know what you're saying in the comments. Oh, Calvin, this data is for less than two months of it being on the market. The lifetime sales will be much higher than this. Now, it's a reasonable assumption to make that the lifetime sales will be significantly higher, but I honestly believe that the lifetime isn't going to go much more than a few hundred thousand higher than what we already have. 1.5 million at absolute most, 1.3 million being more likely. Now, you're probably asking why I think this. So, here's my reasoning. Metroid has a very small audience, but a very large amount of that audience are hardcore fans who build up a lot of hype for its games in the gaming community. So because of these games' sales being driven by hardcore fans and hype, the vast majority of sales on modern Metroid games are made within the first couple months of release. Here's an example. Metroid Dread sold 2.9 million units by March of 2022, which was just under six months after release. However, by December of 2021, Metroid Dread had sold 2.74 million units. That means that in between December 31st of 2021 and March 31st of 2022, it sold only just over 150,000 copies. While in between October 8th of 2021 and December 31st of 2021, it sold well over two and a half million copies. Dread's sales in its second quarter on the market were less than 6% of its sales in its first quarter on the market. Now sure, Prime Master's first sales report was a month sooner than Dread's first sales report. However, Dread had a few things going for it that would make its sales dwindle slower, like having an actual marketing cycle to drum up hype instead of just shadow dropping, so people who didn't buy it immediately would just forget it existed, and of course, Dread was released just a few months away from the holiday season. Prime Remastered, meanwhile, was released just a few months away from Tears of the Kingdom, which I expect to hog all the sales for the rest of the year. Plus, 
Prime Master was released at a time when interest in the Switch was at an all-time low. If you haven't noticed, outside of Tears of the Kingdom, there's just been a lot less interest in the Switch in the past few months than there has been throughout the rest of its lifespan. If Prime Remastered was released in 2020, I assure everyone its sales figures would be much, much higher in its first few months. But my point is, what we have now is probably like 80-90% of Prime Remastered's lifetime sales. As I said, probably like 1.3 million sales lifetime. Not high. Now you're all probably wondering, what's my point? I already said this game definitely surprised Nintendo with the amount of money it made. So what if it didn't sell double? Well, you see, the importance of sales isn't just because of making Nintendo profits convince them to make more, it's also important in terms of player base. A million sales on a Metroid game means a million people who wanted to play Metroid. A million people who are fellow fans of the series or potentially new fans. Two million sales means two million people who wanted to play Metroid, and so on. It's a way for us to tell the strength of the series. Still. A million people who want to play Metroid is good, but we already got the thought in our head of it being 2 million for a Shadow Drop. And that would have meant a ton for Metroid Prime 4, a new Metroid Prime game that will likely be on a new system. A million is still great, especially since I expect Prime 4 to shatter the Metroid sales record anyway, assuming it's on the next system. But what can I say, 1.5 to 2 million would have been awesome. And as I said, these early sales show that it won't happen, but despite that, it is still pretty good sales. Once again, it's Bean Zero Mission, Prime Hunters, Samus Returns, and probably Echoes right now, not to mention a bunch of other Metroid games that I don't feel like are even worth mentioning. That's still absolutely great for the first two months of a Metroid game. I remember when this game launched, I was worried that it wouldn't pass a million. And I had to convince myself that it passing a million or not wouldn't matter since Prime 4 was coming anyway and they shadow dropped Prime, Prime Master. What were they expecting? So. It's great to see it beat that record so quickly, even if over time we were led to believe it would be more. With that being said though, if Metroid Prime 4 only sells this many copies, I'm going to cry.